Yeah, now it's okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shruti Jardar, and I'm a research assistant at the Institute of Chinese Studies, New Delhi. I welcome you all to today's edition of the Wednesday seminar, which is on the topic intelligentization in the People's Liberation Army. Joining us as speaker is ICS Research Fellow K K Venkatraman. Megha Pardi, who is a research analyst at the Takshashila Institute, will be offering her comments as we discuss it. Lieutenant General S L Narasimhan, member India's National Security Advisory Board and DG Center for Contemporary China Studies, will chair the event. A very warm welcome to all our participants. Before I hand over to the chair, I request the audience to note housekeeping rules. Please stay muted during the presentations. Questions can be raised in the chat box anytime during the event, or using the raise hand option during the Q and A session. Please unmute yourself only when called upon by the chair to do so. I now request the chair to carry forward the proceedings. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir Shruti, and thanks to Ambassador Kant and Colonel Venkatraman for this uh, session and for inviting me to uh, chair this session. It's an uh, honor and a privilege to do so. and particularly when a subject like this uh, which is of great interest to anybody who has worn a uniform for some time more than that it is also very intellectually a challenging subject to deal subject to deal with uh, we know that chinese have been leapfrogging their doctrines based on what they observe in the other wars that take place over the other rest world like for example they came up with mechanization Uh, when they started looking at the uh, vietnam war and thereafter when they started looking at the uh, 1991 gulf war they started the mechanization process and brought the uh, brought the four modernizations program where pla was the last they brought it up in 1993 and then when the second gulf war took place in 2003 they leapfrogged that mechanization from uh, from mechanization to informatization they understood mechanization is not going to be complete so soon and they need to move on and in that process what has happened is over a period of time they have also been watching the various developments taking place in warfare around the world and the intelligentization aspect which actually means in, in a layman's language if i want to put it out it simply means informatization energized along with ai will give you intelligentization and so that is why you find in venkatraman's paper in the first chapter he has talked about artificial intelligence and thereafter then he has taken on as to how that is going to develop the third chapter he has talked about the intelligentization in pla and then he has dealt with the uh, civil military fusion as well as the strength and weaknesses in that particular uh, uh, progress that they are making so the issue that comes up is two three things that we need to look at as far as when we look at the subject is concerned one is where is pla at this point in time in terms of mechanization in terms of informatization and in terms of intelligentization that is one two what are the tenets that actually comprise of intelligentization of pla and in that process how much have they progressed is something that we need to look into so that we come to know as to what stage they are in as far as informatization as well as intelligentization is concerned but all this is well said the problem that you will face is anybody who is researching on the subject will face is lack of information and even if information is available to you it will be available in bits and pieces in many places how you stitch it together actually works out to be the task cut out for any researcher on this subject and to that extent when i went through venkatraman's paper which was uh, sent to me a little earlier i found that he has tried to build the block through ai he has understood it very clearly ai is the mastermind behind the intelligentization the stage at which they are coming up to the ai part of it then he has gone on to develop his argument based on what are the strengths and weaknesses that they have got as far as intelligentization is concerned it's a good paper i wish others uh, i don't know whether others have read it or not otherwise i would um, invest uh, in it request you all to invest some time and go through this paper there's a lot of information out there and then i'll now hand over to uh, venkatraman to do his presentation 
and thereafter i'll hand it over to mega for her comments and then i will open it up for further question answer session and then close it up uh, over to you vengatrama take for about 20 25 minutes and uh, for your presentation please thank you sir for setting the context and for sharing the event at the outset let me thank the director uh, master ashok khan for providing me this opportunity and general narsimhan and mega for joining joining to this discussion as you are aware china has set as a school to become a global power by mid 21st century correspondingly the people the people's liberation army or the pla is to become a world class military by the same time frame towards this the pla looks at artificial intelligence or ai and other emerging technologies for its future modernization plans While there are debates about whether AI is an enabling or a transform disrupting technology, the Chinese view AI as a transforming factor which will transform every facet of society, just as electricity and internet did in the past. China has pursued AI in the past with the Chinese Association for Artificial Intelligence created in 1981. Chinese scientists and researchers have taken part in uh, international events and have made their presence felt. the made in china 2025 call for china to become a world's leading manufacturer by 2049 and covered elements of ai such as high end fabrication chip fabrication quantum technology neural networks information and communication equipment and big data processing however a major change in china's approach to ai occurred due to two landmark events in 2016 first was the defeat of world go champion li sedol in march 2016 by an ai program alpha go developed by google deep mind the program created new moves and developed new strategies which were previously unknown to mankind the other major event was the de defeat of a refitted us a retired us air force pilot by an ai system code name alpha in june 2016 the system bet other ai systems in combat before it was finally tested in a human versus ai virtual aerial combat despite repeated attempts the ai system ensured that the human pilot could not score a skill and was repeatedly shot down the new generation artificial intelligence development plan 2017 which followed laid stress on the development of ai as a national goal the plan called for catching up with the rest of the world in ai by 2020 lead in selected areas of ai technology and its application by 2025 and becoming a world leader in ai by 2030 The 14th five-year plan, which followed, calls for achieving major breakthroughs in key and core technologies, and proposes to enhance the value of digital economy industries as a proportion of China's GDP from 7.8 percent now to 10 percent, 10 percent by 2025. It proposes to achieve the same by establishing national-level laboratories for key technologies, creating science and technology innovation centers and national science centers, accelerating the building of national integrated big data centers. building national nodes big data clusters and supercomputing centers accelerating the development of digital china by the growth of emerging industries such as ai and big data and the plan the plan focuses on talent and creating an ecosystem of innovation entrepreneurship and creativity by enhanced funding for research and development and upgrading china's education system This has resulted in major improvements in performance on various indices for emerging technologies in terms of papers presented, patents, and performance in global computing standards. Nevertheless, short, certain shortcomings persist in terms of citations of scientific research papers, the number of companies involved in technology platforms, and semiconductor, fab semiconductor fabrication, poor coordination between the academia, research, and industry, development, and retention of talent. A report by the uh, by the institute of international and strategic studies at peking university assessed that china was lagging in most lagging behind in most sectors of science and technology catching up in a few sectors and leading in very few sectors it suggested that competition and cooperation with the united states is likely to continue and recommended that china must make full use of open academic exchanges and international snt cooperation sustain investment in r&d and developing human resources to narrow the technological gap and finally achieve the dominating position having seen the national developments let us look at the doctrinal developments within the pla i briefly touch upon the terms used 
First is mechanization, which involves upgrading the human component with armored fighting vehicles, aviation, and other mechanical equipment. The second is informatization, which links these mechanized units deployed across various domains, such as land, sea, and air, by means of IT networks to fight an integrated battle. And last is intelligentization, which has AI as the core, but covers a number of other emerging technologies, such as Internet of Things, 5G communications, and unmanned systems. In the PLS view, the mechanization forms the base, the, the informatization provides the uh, route towards intelligentization, and, and all three are interdependent with each other and mutually support each other's development. PLS doctrine is laid down in the form of military strategic guidelines, which are revised regularly based on significant changes in determination of the main adversary, strategic direction, the character and form of warfare, and how China is likely to fight its next war. These provide the guidelines for the rest of the PLA to implement. The 2019 White Paper called the China's National Defense in the New Era set three goals for the PLA, achieving mechanization, enhancing informatization, and improving strategic capabilities by 2020, completing the basic modernization of national defense by 2035, and transforming the PLA into a world-class military force by mid 21st century. The white paper further stated that efforts will be made towards integrated development of mechanization and informatization and speeding up the development of intelligentized armed forces. The science, the science of military strategy identifies that informatized warfare is maturing and is showing distinct signs of intelligentization with attendant implications. First is the development is that developments in science and technology have a significant impact on combat effectiveness and hence it is necessary to consider technology as a core combat capability. Informatization and intelligentization necessitate that operations across various domains such as land, sea, and air are integrated and all components and elements act in synergy under a single central command structure. It identifies space, cyber, deep sea, polar regions, bio, and AI as the new domains of warfare and calls for paying attention to and preparing the conflicts in these domains. With growing integration and synergized employment of combat power across various domains and the replacement of legacy systems by intelligent systems, there would be a need to revise the doctrine, organization structures, and combat techniques. Overall, the PLA considers that it lacks experience in informatized war and is still in the preliminary stages of informatization. Thus, while developments in the field of AI have posed new and greater demands on PLA's modernization, it also provides the PLA an opportunity to leapfrog technological developments, overtake around the corner, and capture the commanding heights of future warfare. PLA's procurement, development, and acquisition of intelligent AI systems is broadly in line with its doctrine and takes place primarily through public contracts, hackathons, and in-house development. First is the means of public contracts. A 2021 uh, report titled Harnessed Lightning by the Center for Security and Emerging Technology at Georgetown University identified 343 contracts related to intelligentization with a combined value of about $1.6 billion during an eight-month period in 2020. The data shown on the screen shows the distribution of the contracts towards respective fields. The report also found that majority of the AI equipment suppliers to the, to the PLA and state-owned enterprises in the defense sector were private Chinese companies. The second mode of acquisition is through hackathons, which provide an opportunity for the PLA to highlight problem areas and invite solutions from the industry, academia, and research organizations. Some are annual events like the IDEAS organized by the Science and Technology Commission, which looks at the future warfare concepts and the intelligent aero fire eye competition organized by the PLA rocket forces, which focuses on improving target recognition. Similarly, the PLA ground forces and the joint logistics supply force have invited industries to demonstrate products to address specific issues. A substantial amount of prize money is allotted to these events and selected, award, selected products are further given additional funds to develop products for the PLA, to meet the PLA's requirements. The third method is in-house development by its own personnel in response to problems faced by the PLA uh, formations and units. These personnel receive support in the form of expert guidance, uh, recognition, and assistance in obtaining patents. Overall, the acquisition of Overall acquisition of systems suggests the priority of induction. 
these are first is autonomous systems the range of autonomous systems include unmanned ground vehicles uavs unmanned ships and unmanned underwater vehicles a number of these systems are still in the experimental stage while some have already been inducted a recent uh, cctv program covered a 10 day joint amphibious combined arms battalion exercise in which nearly 1200 officer cadets and troops participated the exercise combined troops with unmanned platforms such as drones self propelled weapon stations and robo dogs to enhance the situational awareness improve com command control and strike capabilities besides creating awareness about unmanned operations amongst the officer cadets the pla also operates a wide range of uav systems ranging from small hand launched ones to high to long endurance ones such as the wing lung and the sai hong series the pla navy has exercised with vertical takeoff and landing drones and the aircraft carrier shantung is being upgraded for operating uavs during its ongoing scheduled refine uh, refitment and and maintenance these are being integrated with each other and other with other systems and their level of autonomy in terms of navigation and mission accomplishment is being announced as part of the unmanned ships there have been announcement of at least three unmanned ships including what china claims to be the first ai based unmanned ship chu hai yun this ship is cap capable of carrying dozens of unmanned drones surface vessels and submarines and submersibles summer, which can be network network together for observation and will form part of the intelligent mobile ocean stereo observation system the second is the ship uh, large china's largest ship measuring about 200 tons launched by a private company peikun intelligence which completed its first trials recently in terms of intelligent surveillance and reconnaissance systems pla procurements indicate employment of ai for data fusion analysis and fusion of data from multiple sources including foreign language documents the other area is in terms of improving the capabilities of existing isr systems which could identify uav uh, targets in uav footage uh, sorry which could identify capabilities of existing isr systems such as satellites and drones logistics logistics is one of the areas where pla has explored the use of uh, intelligent technologies in early 2022 the pla joint logistics supply, support force organized an event to identify appropriate equipment to enhance combat capabilities in general and logistic capabilities in particular hundreds of companies participated in the event in which a variety of equipment such as unmanned helicopters for evacuating casualties unmanned load carrying trucks and mechanical yaks which could operate in rugged terrain were showcased other intelligent systems include smart warehouses smart kitchens and use of video conferencing for fault diagnosis followed by supply of space by uav which optimizes the utilization of technically qualified personnel and reduces the mean time between failure information operations the cct report quoted earlier suggested that 8% of the contracts were related to information operations these projects related to public opinion warfare and psychological warfare while others focused on electronic and cyber warfare training in may 20 in may 2022 the national defense university organized a month long strategic and campaign level war game using an ai based opposing force in which hundreds of officers cadets and teaching research personnel participated the system permits actual combat decision making and combat behavior of the adversary to include operational procedures and tactics and permits incorporation of multiple parties belonging to the own and adversary sides and neutrals the pla air force has reported using ai to train pilots the PA, pla daily article suggested that an ai system was used as an opposing force in simulator based training of an air force brigade the ai system learned from the pilots and replicated their maneuvers against them forcing the pilots to innovate and improve their training standards the pla is also using virtual reality and augmented reality simulators for training a guided missile brigade of the pla rocket force inducted an intelligent training management system which automates command instructions reduce workload and helps in improving the quality and efficacy of training the system was designed by a, the brigade technical officer who holds a phd in computer science from singhua command and control systems while specific details about uh, command and control systems are not available in the open domain pla writings focus on how 
AI can improve the quality and speed of decision making and its implementation. For instance, a CCTV 7 program covered an unidentified artillery brigade of the PLA ground forces using its intelligent fire control system. The system could analyze the target and meteorological data, the capabilities of various types of artillery and rocket systems with the formation and their deployment locations and provide fire control sol solutions and reduce the time gap between target detection and engagement. Last but not the least, AI is being used to design future weapons and to improve the quality of existing systems such as space and counter space systems, hypersonic missiles, futuristic aircraft, and electromagnetic weapons. There are ethical concerns on the deployment of an employment of uh, on the development and employment of uh, autonomous weapons. The fifth review conference of the UN Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons, held in 2019, proposed 11 guiding principles. These include applicability of the current international humanitarian law to all weapon systems, including lethal autonomous weapon systems, ensuring human responsibility and accountability in respect of lethal auton autonomous weapon systems, ensuring physical and non-physical safeguards, um, risk assessment and mitigation measures throughout the life cycle of the equipment, access to peaceful and intelligent, peaceful use of intelligent autonomous technologies, and maintaining balance between military necessity and humanitarian considerations. China views that the 11 guiding principles provide a good foundation and that there is a need to discuss various aspects of lethal autonomous weapon systems, build a consensus, and finally lead to a bi legally binding agreement. Gregory Allen, a former director of strategy and policy at the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, points out that China's position on AI in 2016 and 2018 supported a ban on usage of AI weapons, but not their development. Further, he points out that the US Department of Defense request for a dialogue on AI risk reduction was rejected by the Chinese on two occasions. While the, within the PLA, there is extensive discussion on the ethical aspects of AI in warfare. While there is unanimity in their views that advancements in AI will determine victory in future wars, they also emphasize the need for thorough testing and of AI systems. Overall, as Mega here pointed out in one of our articles, China wants to be seen as a responsible power while hedging against future de AI developments. The PLA is the PLA is investing investing in a wide range of wide areas towards intelligentization. Most of these are in the nature of experimental technologies, and these are likely to take time to be mature and to be adopted across the PLA. There are a number of shortcomings, such as lack of indigenous processes, quality of data used in AI systems, cognitive biases, which would be carried over to AI systems, unrealistic training, inability to absorb technology, over-centralization, micromanagement, and a shortage of talent. These issues are being addressed, so it is likely to take time. The induction of intelligentized weapons and equipment will enhance the capabilities of PLA. However, the PLA is likely to take time to optimally exploit the capabilities of these systems with the following implications. Equipment inducted till now are either those whose developments were initiated much earlier or those with short, term, short development timeframes. These are a large, there are a large number of intelligentization projects which are under various stages of development and some of which are likely to be inducted in the future. This will require the PLA to adapt further. As fresh equipment and technologies are inducted, the PLA may undergo further rounds of reforms at a later date. This is likely to include the disbanding of certain types of units, creating new units, especially with unmanned and autonomous capabilities, and restructuring existing units with manned and unmanned capabilities. The effect of informatization and intelligentization is likely to result in a greater integration of diverse types of units, both within and amongst the different services. The PLA will need to develop operational concepts and organizational structures to optimally exploit these developments. PLA discussions also point towards integration of AI human decision making, which could both improve the quality and speed of decision making. However, the PLA will retain humans in the decision making process. This is likely to result in greater integration and possible removal, or removal of additional command layers at a later time frame. Whether the PLA is likely to undergo further reduction cannot be discerned now in view of its ambitions to become a global power and consequent increase in commitments. While PLA writings discuss the vulnerability of AI systems to cyber threats and electronic warfare, it's not known 
how the PLA is likely to address these threats. To conclude, the PLA's intelligentization is in sync with China's national goals and can be developed, supported by indigenous capability and is in sync with this doctrine. China's adoption of AI as a national development goal and PLA's intelligentization is likely to transform Chinese society and warfare as we know it. With unsettled borders, there is a need for continuous evaluation of the PLA reforms on its own operational capability and take appropriate measures. The PLA's modernization also provides lessons which need to be studied in detail. This is especially in the areas of indigenization of core and critical technologies such as semiconductors, AI systems, and their employment in warfare. There is also a constant need to monitor developments within the PLA, along with developments in the civil industry, research institutions, and academia. This would necessitate greater allocation of resources towards developing linguistic skills, as well as towards collating and analyzing available data. Thank you, sir. Sir, so you're muted. Sorry. Uh, thanks for sticking to the time and also covering the entire range of the uh, issues covered in your paper. Let me now hand over the floor to Mega for her comments, please. You, you may like to take about 10, maximum 15. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, also, thank you so much, uh, Vaitit, sir, uh, for this wonderful presentation and ICS for inviting me today. Uh, let me just quickly share my screen. Okay, uh, I hope it's visible now. Uh, so uh, on uh, on Sir's paper already, uh, I think uh, it was self-explanatory and Sir Venkatsar's presentation has covered quite a lot uh, from uh, necessary like AI development in China to doctrinal developments and what the Chinese actors are thinking about intelligent warfare. So I'll skip that part now. Uh, so. In addition to what Venkat sir had, uh, has addressed, uh, I'd like to make a few key points and reiterate some which he has already mentioned, but just because I feel they're important and should be reiterated. Uh, so first is the difference between informatized and intelligent warfare. So of the way I see it, it's, um, so if current warfare is a system confrontation mode, uh, so that, that will, that, includes uh, informatized and mechanized uh, warfare. So, but the intelligentized warfare is the next stage where uh, the Chinese conception is algorithm confrontation mode using AI and big data. So in short, if we add AI and big data to current uh, warfare capabilities, it gives us you know, a simplistic definition of intelligent warfare. Uh, so next is uh, interest in informatized and intelligent warfare in the last uh, 20 years or so. Uh, so I think Pankaj sir also mentioned that there have been several uh, military strategies uh, which have uh, mentioned at several stages uh, on different aspects of intelligent and informatized warfare. But this is uh, this data and this graph is from one of my ongoing research, which I thought would be interesting to share. Um, so this is, uh, what I did was I collected articles from PLA Daily, which is an official newspaper for China's military. And uh, I collected articles which mentioned uh, informatized and intelligent, intelligent warfare as a keyword. And I plotted them across all the years. So this is for informatized warfare. This is for intelligentized warfare. As you can see from 2000 to 2000, like till now, 2022, this was taken in April, so uh, 2022 is still going on. But you can see there are several peaks in some years which correspond to some of the uh, political and other developments. For example, the highest peak of uh, these keywords in official articles is in 2004, which was after Gulf War, 2003, Gulf War, and which is when also this uh, defense white paper was released. So these are the years when defense white, white papers were released. What I'm trying to say here is that uh, this uh, two keywords, as you can see, have, uh, or these concepts have been on PLA scholars and writers' mind uh, since past 20 years, but the development, uh, the actual development and actual uh, 
progress in military implementation has been, uh, I believe, has been a little slow. Uh, and I think it kind of picked up pace after uh, Xi Jinping's um, re-emphasis on this topic, which I think we can also see this interest peaks here after 2017 and 2021 is when it reaches it to its highest point. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think I have already mentioned some of these points here that uh, 2017 and 2021, we see again some interest. So these correspond to uh, some political events and release also some defense white papers. Uh, one of the other things which I wanted to highlight is uh, a key uh, executive organ of PLA, which looks into inform, uh, information warfare or informatized warfare and intelligent warfare. Uh, it's a PLA strategic support force. Um, it, it was recent, it was established after the 2015 military reorganization. It has several uh, departments under it. Uh, but the two departments which stand out are uh, network system department and the space system department. Both of these departments are tasked uh, to carry out uh, op information operations uh, across different spectrum. So for example, NSD, uh, that is network system department. Uh, it is responsible for cyber warfare, electronic warfare, uh, psychological warfare, and technical reconnaissance, among other things. Uh, and then there is space system department, which is um, responsible for space warfare, uh, launch, uh, space-based intelligence, telemetry tracking, and uh, surveillance. Uh, so there are several units of under this uh, organization and PLSSF. Um, those are specifically the tasks with uh, you know specific type of operations. For example, this unit known as base 311 uh, it is uh, it is responsible for uh, psychological operations so uh, we know and uh, now these are again uh, this is uh, data collected from what we know publicly but there might be some additional you know, tasks aside to these units and still uh, research going on functions and exact <coughs> sorry exact nature of functions of these units um, I just uh, quickly also wanted to highlight how cyber warfare ecosystem in China works. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, the military part is handled by PLSSF, but uh, cyber warfare in itself, or cyber operations in itself, are, are spread it throughout civilian and military organizations. So if you can see here, not just PLSS, but other departments and ministries are also allegedly involved. So there might be some CMC departments, there might be some units which are directly under the Ministry of State Security. So this is also a critical part of um, uh, you know, future intelligent warfare, which is supposed to, or information warfare, which is the, uh, China is supposed to carry out. Uh, and then there are some known uh, electronic warfare capabilities uh, in South China Sea. Well, in the interest of time, I'll, I'll not explain this, uh, but these are there. But just going back to uh, some points which I wanted to make. Uh, so, General uh, Colonel Venkatraman has also uh, mentioned industrial capability and how. Uh, it is it is a strength of uh, China's uh, you know, ecosystem. Uh, so, yeah, of course it's a strength, but there are some uh, some I would say some uh, drawbacks in terms of quality because there are a lot of uh, companies which cannot make a breakthrough required in critical technologies, especially uh, when we talk about intelligent warfare as conceptualized by PLA and the kind of cutting edge technologies uh, will be needed to conduct those kind of operations. Uh, I don't believe that uh, China's industrial capability has reached there as of now. And I think this was also mentioned somewhere in uh, Sir's paper. Uh, then, uh, Another factor uh, I'd like to highlight is geopolitical competition. 
uh, so since uh, the kind of operations uh, will need access to some critical technologies and as you all know uh, us china cooperation uh, had enabled uh, these technologies to uh, an industry to develop in china but since uh, us china war uh, the cooperation has redu reduced uh, us has banned a lot of uh, uh, access to a lot of technologies and companies in china so the pace of uh, you know carrying out this reform and modernization is going to get affected so there, there has been some progress in areas like quantum and uh, supercomputing in china uh, but i think uh, the kind of military applications we uh, pla would like to see uh, they are still far away uh, then there is another challenge uh, in ai systems and even in big data system it's uh, data driven you need data to train um, algorithms you need data to uh, you need a lot of data to process and you know uh, build the system but uh, one of the challenges is to include tacit knowledge in this kind of data so that it can be used in military operations for example if a, if a, um, if an officer has uh, worked and served in the military for let's say several uh, years and they have some tactical experiences and intuitions which they get after serving uh, on ground those incorporating those experiences in ai systems and uh, using data is a challenge uh, so capturing this real life experiences and learnings is going to be a difficult task and i think um, pla has not reached there yet um, then there is computing capabilities. Uh, I remember when I was reading one of the articles where when this met friends, metaverse frenzy started in China, uh, there's, there's some scholars who had uh, published articles saying that we also need a military metaverse. Uh, and then every time there is uh, some new technology, then there will definitely be an article in PLA Daily and some PLA scholars would be talking about how we can incorporate that in military. But in reality, these kind of you know technologies need massive computing capabilities, and uh, China has not reached there yet. I mean, they're trying. For example, they have several edge computing research centers. They have also launched this project, uh, East Data and West Calculation Project, a national computing project to increase their computing capabilities. But just sheer uh, sheer capability in computing needed for this kind of you know military applications is huge and it, uh, i don't believe that china is still there yet a pla is still there yet and the last thing uh is the skilled ma manpower this is one of the challenge uh, they want to face if they're if uh, they have to implement uh and i say uh, ai and big data and this kind of system they'll need a uh, uh, officials or officers or you know even soldiers who can operate uh, these uh, systems very skillfully under high pressure conditions uh, so this is also going to be one of the challenges or you know, i can I, I would say challenges for pla which i think they haven't figured out yet uh, yeah so that's it from my side So you're muted. Oh, so you're muted. And mute. Yeah. No, I'm on. I'm okay. <clears throat> yeah. Thanks, Mega, for that uh, for your remarks and the inputs that you gave on the PLA Strategic Support Force. Uh, PLA Strategic Support Force is a different ball game. I'll cover it in the end a little bit more than uh, what uh, you put out there. Uh, let me open the floor for the question answer session. There are a few questions which have come onto the chat box already. Uh, first one was from uh, Mr. Rapai. Mr. Rapai, can you come on line and ask that question, please? Are you there? Otherwise, Venkat, you can go through that question in this chat box and then answer that. Uh, yes, sir, I'll do that. Uh, uh, Mr. Rapai has asked a question about how PLA is going to uh, going about the analytical capabilities and integration of systems and knowledge capabilities. Uh, in terms of analytical skills, uh, analytical capabilities, this is again, like I said, it's a, uh, it's an issue in, 
it's a work in progress. Uh, the, there are a lot of shortcomings which the PLA has. For instance, about an year uh, in July, uh, in this somewhere around December uh, 2020 and Jan 2021, uh, the PLA initially brought out about the integration of AD uh, networks between the uh, Air Force and the uh, uh, Air Force and the PLA ground forces. Uh, subsequently, it took another six months for them to uh, for another report, which again said that the uh, thing has been completed, and they have been able to cut down the time uh, drastically. Uh, that was in somewhere around June 2021, and uh, by about December, they were able to say that it is uh, that the system has stabilized and it is working. So, one is that we also miss out a lot of these information over a period of time, and second, it is taking a fair amount of uh, time for them to implement it. Nevertheless, it's much shorter than other what other countries would probably be doing. So that is one. In terms of analytical, and only once these uh, diverse systems, like uh, Jaran Asiman had brought out before the presentation started, these are fragmented systems which are in place. These need to be integrated further, and they should be able to uh, talk to the, each other without manual intervention. And that's when the analytical uh, capabilities will come in. So it's going to take some time. But work is in progress. The PLA itself, when we read about shortcomings in PLA, we must also keep in mind that these are issues which are which have been identified by the PLA and which they have taken up for working. And the PLA is a very uh, introspecting organization. So we see a fair amount of their own uh, articles which are very critical about themselves. As of now, I can only say that it is a work in progress and it is going to take time in terms of building up the analytical capabilities. Thank you, Wendy. I just wanted uh, you covered many points. I just wanted to raise because this is also an area anal analysis may be good, but uh, you know, integrating that knowledge base and uh, what information. This is the one of the problem they also face in the human intelligence side uh, across many various agencies. So uh, it is interesting that uh, you are looking at uh, the de latest developments. So let us keep on studying what what the areas how they are integrating, and it will take a longer time. It's not a short day, short time. Thank you. The second question has come from Professor Hemant Adlaka. Would you like to unmute yourself and ask that question, please? Again, if he's not there, you can go uh, through that. No, question. no. Uh, no, no, I'm here. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it took time for me to get unmuted by the host. So that's oh. it. <laughs> uh, I actually typed my question because my connectivity is not stable. Anyway, I'll try to quickly uh, raise two points. Uh, one, of course, thank you for bringing up this discussion, very important discussion, but rarely discussed uh, in the webinar forums here. So thanks to Mr. Venkat Raman and also uh, thank you to you, Lieutenant Journal and Dr. Mega Pardi uh, for your inputs and insights. My quick queries are actually not questions. One that we still, uh, when we look at the American literature on the issue, there are concerns that uh, the American companies continue to supply data, software, funding to Chinese companies in developing Chinese artificial intelligence applications, especially including the military uh, applications. So that's an area of concern, which uh, America is not able to streamline or tighten screws on excluding Chinese companies from acquiring this, which I, I really am puzzled. Uh, why is it so? That is one. And second, uh, I like, uh, I mean, America, everybody knows, spends uh, far more than China on annually on defense. Uh, but when we look at the artificial intelligence and uh, developing article, artificial intelligence software, et cetera, and its applications, the uh, Chinese and the Americans are spending almost the same amount of money, which is around $1.5 billion. So I just wanted uh, Mr. Venkat Raman's comments on these points. Thank you. Go ahead, Venkat. Thank you, Dr. Adalaka, for the question. Uh, the first question about uh, that American companies supply the data, the software, and the funding, uh, I do agree with it. But you also have to understand the nuances to it. Uh, one is that uh, some of it comes under the ban, which has been put by the uh, the US uh, Department of Commerce under the entity list. 
the cct uh, study which i had quoted earlier said there were about 273 uh, private companies chinese private companies which were supplying equipment to the uh, pla out of which only 11 companies were placed under the us uh, entity list so there is a large number of uh, companies which are not under the entity list which are free to import these equipment and later resupply to the pla so that's one area which uh, there is a problem the second problem with for Ch- uh, the us is you cannot do a blanket ban on all uh, supplies in terms of uh, things so they are very focused in terms of areas such as uh, the chip fabricating equipment which is uh, us uh, primarily on a us design and the other uh, uh, area is once you start putting a complete ban works in a short time but in the long term china will be forced to uh, develop its uh, indigenous in, uh, Uh, chip uh, making or technology making capability much faster uh, china also acquires other uh, technology algorithms by other all possible means including espionage using uh, open source information technical cooperation with other uh, universities uh, for instance uh, the uh, uh, the hong kong university of science and technology has a cooperation with uh, stanford university for development of ai based chips that's on their website so they are utilizing all possible avenues for importing the uh, technology and developing their own uh, base so that is one thing we need to keep in consideration the second you are comparing that uh, us spends uh, 500 billion dollars more than its uh, more on its difference than china but uh, we are talking about the same amount of developing ai for military purposes around 1.5 billion dollars we have to keep in mind two things the us investments in ai Uh, are primarily commercially driven they are driven by private companies not by the government in china it's, it's the other way around the primarily the government which is in, uh, making large scale investments in terms of uh, infrastructure and making it available to the pub, uh, research institutions for updating their overall uh, thing uh, overall uh, development the second part is the military civil fusion while the chinese uh, say that there is about 25% integration between the military and civil in the long term they look at around 80% of uh, integration between the military and civil where the same firm is going to uh, manufacture equipment for both the military and the civil civil the third point the 1.6 billion dollars which uh, the cct uh, study uh, worked out it is only for a period of about 10 months we don't know what the actual figures are and these relate to only public procurements like in my when i brought out my presentation uh, like the, there is a there is a portal for uh, what i call the uh, weapon procurement in china but that is not accessible from india earlier it used to be accessible now it is not accessible they have been able to cull out this data over a period of time working from uh, various other uh, information sources so that information is not complete so that's something we need to keep in mind the second uh, the other issues which we need to keep in mind like i said is the uh, procurements which are made through hackathons and uh, this possibly doesn't figure as part of the public procurements where you are calling out a tender the third aspect is this pla's own in house developments like these are samples which come in areas but it doesn't figure in somewhere in the intelligent ai or the intelligent decision procurement budget so there is a wide disparity between the figures which are available from us and china unfortunately we are unable to quanti- i am unable to quantify it i'll put it that way i hope i have answered your question Yeah, third question is from Ambassador Kanta. Uh, th- thank you, Madam. Let me first of all thank Venkat for an excellent presentation and General Narsimhan and Mega for their insights and comments. Uh, uh, Venkat, my question is really about uh, what are the implications for India of uh, what you have just described? You know, PLA's uh, deployment of tools, technologies. Uh, and doctrines of intel- intelligentization uh, have we seen any, any evidence of such deployment uh, when it comes to pla's uh, western theater command uh, vis-a-vis india including uh, in the course of ongoing uh, uh, you know what is standoff that we have with china um, uh, so there's limited information one is first is intelligentization we are just commencing the pla has just started commencing with the intelligentization uh in the last couple of years so uh and some of these equipment are just being inducted but as regards deployment of tools and technologies uh there are some tools which are evident one in the form of drones 
and uh, unmanned vehicles, which have been shown in various uh, PLA uh, broadcasts or programs and the PLA news uh, being deployed opposite or at least being experimented in uh, areas opposite to us in Eastern Ladakh. Uh, the other aspect, uh, how do, uh, so these are, and in fact, one uh, during the Galwan crisis, it said that one of the uh, private companies was actually in situ providing uh, coverage, uh, providing drone coverage to this particular areas. This was not inducted into the PLA, but the system had been come for trials or for, and was uh, immediately used by the PLA at the time of the Galwan incident. Uh, this input was posted by the company in its Vapo tweet, and subsequently it was deleted. So uh, these are the issues which we have as of now. I do not have any more information. Thanks, Venkat. Uh, General Simon, can we request you also to comment on uh, implications for India? I'm going to, I'm, I've noted yeah. on these points, I'll yeah. come in the end. When okay, in my fine. closing fine. remarks, I'll okay. cover all these points. Okay. Thank you, and thank you. Note the points as they come along. Yeah, okay. Uh, Mr. Umesh Gupta. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Umesh Kumar Gupta, Assistant Professor of Chinese and PhD Scholar at the University of Rajasthan. Actually, first of all, I would like to thank Sir for uh, giving such an informative and comprehensive presentation on intelligentization of People's Liberation Army. Being a PhD scholar on Chinese to English translation with focus on military translation, I'm very much anxious to know the resources uh, which are reviewed to prepare this paper and the percentage of Chinese sources which are reviewed and how are these incorporated through translation or through direct, directly reserving incorporated. On such complex research, uh, is, uh, sir, do you feel there is any requirement of collaboration with the Chinese language expert having very basic knowledge of this uh, complex issue like informatization and intelligence? Like uh, in our translation research, I have learned a Chinese scholar, Wu Shu Fan, is saying that English to Chinese translation is the main area of concern for China to know about the world. Uh, they are saying that this translation is very important for military theory, knowledge of foreign military theories, military intelligence, military technologies, and military foreign relations. So for us, when we are dealing with China, similarly, uh, this Chinese to English translation is very much important for knowing all these aspects about China. So, sir, I would like to know whether there is the requirement of collaboration, writing joint papers on such critical issues, because the translators like me, having very ba basic knowledge, but the expert like you in this area, have vast knowledge, but language, I don't know at what depth uh, you are just having expertise in that. So, that is my question. Please. Venkat, do you want to Thank come you. In? I will do that, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Umesh Gupta. Uh, firstly, uh, like uh, what General Nasiman had said before this, uh, before the presentation, uh, the formal uh, webinar commenced, uh, collaboration of any sort uh, in the field of China studies is critical. It's like the information which is available is uh, humongous. There is a lot of effort required to uh, sift through that information, cut out the essentials, uh, collate it, and then analyze it. And uh, any support in this field or any collaboration in the field is actually essential. Looking, coming onto the sources, I primarily look at uh, two sources. One is the PLA Daily, which is uh, the PLA's own official publication. And the second is the CCTV7, which, uh, has, uh, which focuses on military. Uh, my Chinese language understanding is very limited. So what I normally do is to uh, uh, Mission Translate using, using Google Translate uh, for a faster translation. And then uh, when I find some critical area where I need to really clarify myself, that I sit and do it manually using an online uh, with, a, with a dictionary and then focus on that. So that way I'm able to manage the time as well as the uh, volume of information. And then I cut it out. Uh, regarding translation, uh, same goes for the CCTV seven videos. My main problem is when there is a subtitle, it's good. I can use the subtitles to work on the translation. If it is not there, I'm uh, somewhat clueless. Then I correlate with other sources which are available uh, on that particular uh, thing, which gets, normally gets covered in other Chinese media or uh, Hong Kong based media. So then I'm able to get the uh, understand the context much better. So that's how I've been following it. 
regarding collaboration with chinese experts uh, language experts it's a this it's a nice way of progressing there's also an issue in the sense uh, chinese language is very contextual a person who doesn't know the context or uh, may not possibly be able to identify it so there is a requirement of both uh, being uh, proficient in that particular field let's say like i'm from a particular arm or service of the army so that i know at least related to that i'll be able to understand things understand the nuances better correlate with the language and then draw the uh, inferences as compared to someone who's linguistic uh, purely who has pure linguistic skills but that said any support uh, of especially in language translations or at least we know what is the broad content is in specific areas probably it will come in later it's a certainly a, a requirement for uh, collaboration i hope i answered your question thanks um, thank you sir yeah uh suyash desha is the last question thank you sir um uh, first of all congratulations mr venkat raman for an insightful presentation also well done mega for a very good uh, note uh i would like to ask about integrated joint operations as we all are aware uh, china rolled out its newer uh, doctrine which is called as info, uh, integrated joint operations very less information is available right now uh, since you are following this topic can you uh provide us some provide some light on what they are saying about integrated joint operations inter theater inter service inter force inter unit and a uh, role of ai big data or quantum in it thank you venkat uh this is a slightly wider area uh for me to answer frankly but i'll never just try my best to answer uh the first is that like uh, i brought up the example of the uh, air defense uh, control and reporting system in western theater command uh, after the 2020 uh, in, uh, crisis in eastern ladakh the pla took about roughly an year plus for it to integrate its air defense between the ground forces and the air, uh, and the pla air force so if that be the case i'm sure uh, barring probably uh, the eastern theater command or the southern theater command which is opposite to sensitive areas uh, and we are not seen any such integration or being reported maybe i missed it out that is possible so a lot of systems are being uh, are still uh, it to be linked with each other and uh, uh, capable of interacting with each other so this is a system in progress and is going to take some time before which the ai the big data and the quantum uh, technologies are going to come into play as regards integrated uh, we must also keep in mind when the pla talks about doctrine or uh, the campaign levels these are it doesn't mean that today i have started with the uh, military strategic guidelines for the new era and within day it starts uh, within a day or two or a year it starts being implemented this is for the, this is the starting point which everyone tries to work towards with it may take 5 years it may take 10 years so in between the pla actually has a uh, two or three generations of uh, doctrines concurrently working so this is a this is what i have understood from past studies of uh, the pla's doctrine uh, doctrine so this is going to take some time for it to get implemented we are only just done the goal post this is where we are going to reach in the future how long it is going to take time i am not in a position to answer i hope to answer this uh, i have answered this question so I, thank if you if i can if i can intervene a bit for a bit so uh, of course we don't know what they currently doing uh, that information is limited and uh, as vikas sir also highlighted it will probably take time to achieve kind of integrated joint capabilities as uh, they are mentioned in guidelines or, or the doctrine but there has been an interesting discourse and in, among pla writers on how or what they exactly want when they want in, to integrate operations what they want is basically uh, so if if i'm a commander here i'll i'll sit in my room i'll get real time information from all the operations happening across uh, across all theaters like for example if pla navy is doing something or pla air force is doing something so all that what information of bat- real time battleground information should be available with me and then i can uh, issue commands uh, so that they can coordinate with each other and have an effective you know combat operation like, i'm sorry it's a little hazy in military terms but the ultimate aim is 
to uh, carry out joint operations amongst different services, but that can be managed uh, from by one commander or you know who is not exactly sitting there but still knows what's going on in real time. Uh, and the role of AI and quantum and big data here is that uh, uh, if, for example, an operation is being carried out in one of the regions, then big using big data and AI, uh, a commander who is op operating those uh, that mission should already know uh, what would be the best strategy based on previously available information or that kind of operation. This is just you know, one of the things. Uh, which is being conceptualized and quantum is probably uh, will be probably more useful to break encryptions or you know break encryptions of enemy uh, uh, equipment so that's there but again this is not something which is i don't think this is not something which has been implemented yet okay uh, anybody any any other questions otherwise i'll take three minutes to sum up and then we will close this discussion is that okay um, Venkat, is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I have, I have, I have gone through this discussion, and I've gone through other discussions in in, in the course of my my uh, dealing with this subject. Uh, one thing we always come across is in terms of how many um, uh, how many patents the Chinese have filed, what are the quality of the papers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I would take that with a little pinch of salt. Though it is a fact, it is there in, in, in the face to say that so many of the patents have come up, the quality of the patent, the quality of the papers is there. But the fact of the matter remains that the Chinese have been progressing in science and technology. That is the underlying factor that we need to look at and see how they are progressing further on this particular thing. On the PLA strategic support force, Mega said what she said and to add to what she said. She said everything right. I, I have no quarrel with what she said. But to add to that, the, the sphere of space is going to be extremely important. Even, even in terms of intelligentization, space is going to play a major, major role. So we need to be looking at space technologies that the Chinese are developing in a, in a very, very, uh, very, I would say, consciously and very continuously we need to monitor this. The other issues on, on you know, how does China get this big data? That question we need to look at the digital Silk Road. When the Chinese rolled out this digital silk road the aim was one one aim was to propagate their technology to the areas in which they are going to the other aspect is when they do this it gives them enormous amount of data uh, the reason why we banned many of the apps here is the data was going back to china so digital silk road is a major way in which they will be able to grab as much data as they want to do the improvements in the ai and other things there was also a question regarding this budgeting. Now, when you say US is, US is budgeting about $801 billion and China is budgeting $293 billion, what we need to keep in mind is two things. One, the US has got a worldwide presence. They have to cater for that kind of presence and that kind of equipping, that kind of maintaining. So that takes a lot more money than what the Chinese would need to just maintain one Djibouti. So at the moment, you find the differential is there, but then the Chinese spending money is also increasing over a period of time every year. And the second thing that you need to look at is most of the weapons in China are produced indigenously and they get more value for the money that they spend for procurements. Hardly anything they import today. They import actually the S-400 variety only from Russia. Otherwise, most of the things they are being, uh, they are all being manufactured within China. So that gives them the leverage of getting more bang for the buck in, in, in terms of procurements. The technical problems we face, you know, we keep saying this, China is, you know, tw two decades away from uh, US, et cetera, et cetera. Please stand to, my understanding is on two things. One, you, if you deny technology, you may delay the technology to that country, but it also gives motivation to that country to indigenize that process. So like, for example, we had issues we had a cryogenic engine, we were in the technology, ultimately we got, got around that. So you have, you have, you are actually in a way forcing China to invest more into becoming self-sufficient in those technologies. That is another thing that you need to be looking at. 
the other thing is on implications for india what uh, ambassador ashok khan asked for at the moment what we see the way you analyze how they are progressing in say intelligentization or joint operations or integrated operations is to analyze the exercises that they are doing or the equipment that they are committing in terms of any kind of confrontation that comes up so if you look at both of them we don't get to see the kind of joint operations as yet in fact joint operations is one of the weaknesses that the pla faces faced when the reforms took place and even now that is what they are trying to develop after they do this they are going to go towards integrated joint oper integrated operations which suyash asked about and thereafter they allowed intelligentize now the issue is they are still in the very elementary stages of this entire process so i am not saying that they are not progressing but they have to do a lot more to get to that level of say informatization and intelligentization the other question is uh, and therefore you don't find much of that evidence against the western theater command as ambassador ashok khan actually asked for why is us helping prc the question is very similar and simple the government has got a policy towards china the us government i'm talking about that does not mean the us corporate has got the same policy towards china in fact these two are actually diametrically opposite the chinese corporates or the american corporates would like to do business with china and make that money for which they went whereas the us government policy is different so in some ways there is still some kind of cooperation that is going on the us government is increasingly clamping down on this how effective they will be we'll have to wait and see then the other issue is on the use of drones etc they are still very rudimentary in this i mean you can use drones for say sending some logistics sub support you can probably target some of the objectives that is possible but have they integrated this whole system into the sensor to shooter kind of a relationship which will give you some kind of say intel in the the uh, informative set operations integrated operations you don't see that as yet so i would still feel that they are still in the rudimentary stage of building these blocks one by one and then they will link it up at some point in time they are also linking they are also developing their own uh, data links which they were earlier using type 16 links earlier now they are trying to develop their own data links to 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 support the system so therefore if you look at it in this entire subject if you look at it one thing is clear that ai is going to play a major role in informatizing and intelligent intelligentizing the warfare that is one thing therefore we need to monitor as to how they progress in ai that is one aspect the last point i wanted to mention sorry one more point i had noted down there was we all keep saying chinese don't have the technology but today if you look at it for 80% of your requirements in india you need only 180 nanometer chip you don't need 5 nanometer or 3 nanometer chip similarly for many of the application that you use today you don't need that very high tech kind of kind of chips that you need but chinese have already got the capability to produce 28 nanometer and they are trying to reduce that further so i think they will have the capability to do it but one thing is it is one thing to have a vision it is purely another thing to match that vision with action on ground these two are at the moment not matching as far as pla is concerned how much time will it take i would typically put a bet of about 10 to 15 years by about 20 35 if you revisit this lecture or revisit this paper which venkat has written <clears throat> you will find much more meaning to this therefore in some ways this paper is going to be very futuristic so let me stop here and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to chair this session thank you sir thank you everyone for joining in uh, for today's session uh, you can find the link for next week's seminar in the chat box i thank uh, all the participants the chair and the discussant uh, along with our speaker